Hello and welcome. I'm Lee Peterson, host of the podcast WDCast, which is called WDCast because it's brought to you by WD Partners, whose tagline is innovation at scale. And that means that WD has services that range from strategy, design, digital operations to architecture and construction management. So in other words, end to end. That's at WDPartners.com. Thanks, WD, for sponsoring the show. And thanks, Chris. Uh, a second about the mission of this show, on WDCast, we want to talk about the burning business platforms of the 21st century and the challenges involved. So we're not that concerned about what the business is, as you'll find out today, and as long as it's on fire. And, you know, I think er- kind of everybody is today, so there's obviously a lot to talk about. So today we're going to talk about being the boss and specifically the leader, CEO, and as a matter of fact, CEO of the year, according to Columbus CEO magazine, uh, of a large and locally famous pizza company, and also about being a human being, which the combination is not as easy as it sounds. I have with me such a person, someone who has spent years on the front lines of marketing, business, being a dad, and, you know, being filling philanthropic to boot, Tom Krause. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lee. Tom has currently got his hands full in all of the aforementioned, and full disclosure, Tom is someone I've known for years on pretty much all those fronts, playground, the, the whole nine yards. And with that in stride, I'm sure he's got a lot of leadership smarts to impart on you listeners. So we look forward to hearing from you, Tom. Tom, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you coming all the way out here. Sure. Thanks for having me. A little disclaimer before we get going. The thoughts and opinions expressed today belong to the members of this discussion, do not necessarily represent those of the companies that they work for, which is Donato's Pizza and also WD Partners. So, Tom, before we get going, uh, you have a hell of a background uh, when we did our research. So could you give us the story of how you got from where you started to being CEO of the year? Wow. <laughs> well, I was born on... A, no, we don't want to start there. Um, yeah, from a career standpoint, you know, when I was younger, I always wanted to be a um, a teacher. I wanted to be I was a playground leader. I was a little league football coach. I was interested in teaching. In fact, that's what I majored in in college first couple of years. Until one day I read a survey of salaries of teachers and I quickly changed my major. (laughs) Or either that or strikes by teachers. Yes, that's true. (laughs) Um, So I ended up going into um, an advertising focus. And out of college, I... I started working for a local ad, ad agency here in town, Hammeroff Millenthal, which you may remember. Well, I know the last name really well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, I had all these intentions of going to, you know, getting out of Columbus and going to New York or Chicago or L.A. and then sent resumes everywhere to, to you know, work in the big city. And I... One of many times that I thought I would leave Columbus, and I I really never did, not for a long period of time. Anyway, but I ended up working in the advertising field, and um, a few years after uh, I had started with this agency, a couple of us went off and started our own agency. Right, right, right. Um, I went on to, you know, sell out my share of that business and went on my own for a little bit. And then I ended up, actually, I ended up hooking up with um, Backer and Spielvogel, which was, you know, a big agency out of New York who got the Wendy's business. And so that kind of put me into the restaurant side of things. Right, right. Um, and actually, uh, our, our smaller agency, we, we handled some McDonald's business also. So I started kind of getting into the restaurant side and, and ended up working for Wendy's for uh, about 18 years. I left, I left the agency and went over to the client side. 
Uh, I had all the plans to, you know, stay there forever. I was super happy from a career standpoint. I didn't happy know you with, came from Wendy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when McDonald's had purchased Donato's, they were building their team, you know, and got it. they were going to, you know, take over the world and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I got I got recruited. I basically, you know, it's just a, it was really a career decision, you know, money, job, all that kind of stuff. And, I, I, you know, in the meantime, I ended up falling in love with the company and actually fell in love with the founder's daughter also. Interesting story. <laughs> so yeah, we'll love abounds. <laughs> love abounds. Fell in love with the company. I, I, I thought you were going to say the first thing, uh, the second thing first. So. <laughs> um, and, and then I would say then it wasn't until, and, and I, these were all marketing type positions, and it wasn't until uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Jim had asked me to be, you know, if I wanted to be the CEO of the company, which kind of took me by surprise, to be honest with you. It was after the recession and, um, you know, as a, as a higher priced brand, Yeah. you know, we, you know, our business was, you know, suffered a little bit. And so I thought, gosh, the last thing you want to do is put the marketing guy in charge, you know, but, uh, oh, I don't know about that. It, it's, <laughs> it's turning out. Okay. It's turning out. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, it is kind of amazing because that same thing sort of, I, I came from the client side you know, to the agency side. Okay. But it's like one of the things that really struck me about working for an agency was how much you learn about a company. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened, right? I mean, you learned about restaurants, you learned it top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And then, so it's, it's not easy, but it's a transition that's, you know, fathomable anyway. Yeah. It was almost, um, like you're saying, I think it's a great point. You end up, being able to kind of, cause your job is really to evaluate the business yeah. situation so that whatever, whatever recommendation that you bring in is, you know, it's going to be successful. So you got, you really do have to understand the, the client's business in some cases better than they do. And so, uh, I think that, I think I kind of got the bug with that and, and frankly got tired of not being able to implement the things that I thought had to be implemented. So that's really why I went on the client yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is that thing in, in restaurants too, uh, um, marketing and operations. Yeah, and what we discovered from working and myself personally with with restaurants is that operations is king, kind of like in specialty retail, which was my original starting point, where the merchants were king. Right. Operations is king in restaurants, yeah, right? Absolutely. And then at the, nowadays, I mean, marketing is probably equally, if not more important. Well, I think, you know, I think to be successful in the restaurant business, you principally have to be able to deliver a reliable, consistent, excellent product and service. And, th- and that's an operations mindset. And, and that, that's the basis for being successful. Now, you don't have a, if you don't have a, a brand that means something, yeah. if you don't have, yeah. uh, you know, a, a voice that matches it, you, you can suffer, but it's going to cave in if you don't have that, you know, that operations core. Like the great job Arby's has done. Oh, I yeah. think that their, their advertising is spectacular. Mm-hmm. I think it's actually ahead of the product. No offense. <laughs> All the Arby's lovers. <laughs> uh, you know, you're commonly considered from the people that I've talked to like a people person. You think that's a fair assessment? I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, I uh, gregarious fellow, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so in the agency that you guys started, a lot smaller than now, you know, f- five thousand employees. Is that correct? Today, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so being a people person, like, wh- how did that change your perspective? Coming from a smaller company where we basically you can talk to everybody every day to something, you know, like 5,000. My God, people all over the country. Um, well, I, I think there are a lot of things to that. Personally, you know, I was very young when I was with this smaller agency. And I was, you know, a bulldog in terms of work. And, uh, you know, it just worked. And, uh, and I think... Uh, 
to your point, when you know when you get some scale in an organization, you ha- in order to be successful, you have to. I, I actually have to support the five thousand employees. We call them associates. I have to support them. So, and I have to allow them to be a part of crafting the plan. I think that's probably the bigger piece when you're an entrepreneur or small business owner and, and, uh, you know, you, you, you tend to have a vision in your head and you just make sure that that vision is <laughs> <laughs> laid out. Exactly. <laughs> and when, uh, you know, when, when you get to a certain size, you know, if you're not, if you're not involving or empowering people or bringing them along to help tell the story with you and having fun with it, you know, this people person thing, I think, you know, having fun and energy and, and making the business exciting. I think that that's how you, you change your leadership style. In fact, I, I'll never forget at this small agency, I was, you know, we did great. We, you know, we did for a small firm, we did, we did great, but, um, it was one meeting, the client called me a bulldog. I thought, oh man, <laughs> I think I'm missing the mark here because <laughs> I, you know, it's like, you know, I know we have to do this and when are we going to do that? You know, and it's, it, you know, that's, it's not do, bulldog, how you... do bulldogs bite? I don't know. They they At least bark. It wasn't a pit bull. That's true. That's true. And if it was a German Shepherd, you could have gone, yeah. Thanks, Lee. You're a nice guy. <laughs> this feels like therapy to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a psychology major. Just so you know. Mm. Um, now one you of tell things, me. One of the things I found out about leadership and you know, from here at WD. I started with a small group and I talked to them every day and we always knew what each other was doing. Then when we got big enough, a hundred and some people, yeah. I, I, you know, you discover that the, it's sort of a bell curve. Like there's 10% of the people that love you and they'll do anything for you. And, and then there's 10% of the people that hate you. Right. And no matter what you do, no matter what you say, they're going to go off somewhere and go, oh God, that idiot, you know. Right. And everybody else is a little ambivalent. And, and you know, if you... Like you're saying, if you keep them motivated and and uh, especially if business is good, right, you'll be fine. But I think the hardest part for me was to kind of get over the ten percent that hate you. True, right? No, they, I, I totally agree. I actually had a, a brief stint of teaching over at Ohio State. Uh, it was obviously a, a very dark period at Ohio State because they they asked me to teach a, a marketing <laughs> class there. <laughs> they were. They were <laughs> Must have had a lot of people retire that year or something like that. Uh, but I remember being so panicked about that very thing. I exactly, thought, yeah. You know, 10% of these students know that I'm absolutely full of it. And I spent my time worrying about them, and I missed kind of the rest of the the yeah. rest of the rest bunch. Yeah, I I got some inspiration from a movie called uh, Thin Red Line. Like a, It's actually a leadership movie. And Nick, Nick Nolte has to come in and, and – uh, a lot of the, the uh, lieutenants and stuff don't want to do a bad thing. They're afraid it's going to hurt their men. And, you know, they, they hate this guy. And he comes down in the field and he makes it happen. And regardless of what, what happened, I mean, I took away from that, like, oh, my God, you know, the, those, the 10%, the haters, you got to roll. You got to get something done, you know. And you, you know, just kind of like you did with the smaller agency, what the direction should be, even though you're more, you know, um, bottom up than you were before mm-hmm. you still gotta you gotta drive ahead mm-hmm. i'll tell you the the other thing is the 10 percent that you think love you they, they probably don't love you quite as much as you think they love you either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's probably true too. yeah <laughs> it's it's a uh, kind of a light okay so uh donato's is an amazing company and it's really one that i've probably spent way too much money on myself i, I remember going through a donato's period where it was like Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. What do you want to do? I know what I want to do. And, you know, just do not pizza after pizza. So, um, kind of what what's it like? Like, what's what's the day to day? What are you doing day to day? You have five thousand people working for you. You have a bunch of stores. You've got a manufacturing facility. You've got equipment galore that you've got to you know keep an eye on. There's new trends going on. So, what's your what's your day like? Um. You know, some sometimes you may characterize it as spinning plates a little bit, but uh, really just I probably spend a majority of my time making sure that people are able to do the things that they they need to do. So I'm 
I'm really trying to either solve problems, clarify communication. There's so much miscommunication sometimes oh, yeah, yeah. or yeah. misunderstanding that I, I find myself spending a lot of time trying to clarify things for people. Um, you know, so, you know, that's involves, you know, meeting as a leadership team that involves, I, I, I do a lot of just walking around the building and just kind of popping in and letting people kind of just, you know, unload something. It might be an issue, it might uh -huh. be oh, yeah. a question, or I might have a, a thought in my head that I want to talk to them about. So, I mean, the main, th the, the most important thing in my mind is that you have a clear plan of what is the most important things that we should be doing. And, th and that's a, it's a planning process, which is, sounds like a snoozer of a topic. But I think when, when we as a group come together and say, based on what we understand uh, is, is happening in the, the marketplace and consumers and all the data and all this analysis, and we come down, we say, where are we? And then we say, where do we want to go? And when we all agree that this is where we want to go, then what are the handful of things that we have to do, the hard things usually, <laughs> that we have to do to get there or the big rocks as, as we call them at our company. And so, and then once, you know, and then we put those plans together. And then, so the rest of my time, back to your question is, I try to spend time going, I think you're, I think you're, you're veering off. Uh -huh. yeah. You're, you're, yeah. it's not a big rock at sand or, it's a shiny object or, you know, let's really confront the real issue. So it's a lot of, a lot of kind of facilitating. I, I really feel like I'm probably a lot more of a facilitator and, and also try to make sure that we're having fun. I mean, that's probably the other big piece. You spend all this time in a job and, you know, if, if there's not laughter in our building, I, I feel like we're doing something wrong. So and that's I, th I think that's huge too. Mm -hmm. You know, where uh, if you're going to spend whatever half your waking hours at a place and you're not having fun, right? Then you need to start looking for another job, or you need to do something else. I mean, yeah. Uh, or or have, are we creating an environment that people can feel like they can be authentic and be themselves? Because yeah. when you don't feel it, you don't have fun when you f you don't feel comfortable. You know. What do you think of that Amazon thing where they? They say if you want to leave, we'll give you ten thousand dollars. You can go right now. Um, I don't want to do that right now, but <laughs> <laughs> but but I do think you have to make sure that you're looking out for the well-being of a person. Um, uh, I don't know if you know Doug Smith is a, is a, a local author now. He, mm -hmm. he wrote a book. Uh, I think it's called something Happiness. It's about it's about happiness. But he was the CEO of. Uh, Best Foods in Canada. He was a CEO of Borden in Canada, and he um, he came down with uh, a rare form of cancer. And long story short, he ended up spending a lot of time kind of reflecting on what creates happiness. And uh, God, and yeah, <laughs> and, and, and actually, he's he's somebody you should bring on the show sometime. Fascinating, great story. Um, but he talks about these three concentric circles. I don't think he – I'm sure he got it from somewhere else. But it's – the circles are what you're really good at, intersecting with what you love, intersecting with what the world needs. Well, and if you get those well, three pieces – Yeah. So we've, we've been trying to use that at Donato's and spending time with people and saying, you know – we just recently made some changes and some people were – they were in a job. They were doing great. But they weren't happy, and so, you know, move to do something else. And if it's not at Donato's, that's that's fine too. But so I'm not going to give you ten thousand dollars to leave, though. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think their goal is obviously with who knows how many employees. I mean, what right. do they have? A million employees or whatever is um, to weed people out right away. Right. You know, seeing somebody that's uh, yeah. disgruntled as infectious. Yeah. You know, which is which is a, a good thought actually. When I first read it, I thought. Oh, and it's pretty, if you can afford it, it's pretty genius. But I guess by keeping the people there, you should be able to afford it. Um, also, kind of the big part of Donato's is family-run business, right? Yeah. I mean, really a family-run business. You're part of the family. Right. So what, what's that like? I mean, uh, do you have four bosses? 
Huh. Or any? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, I probably have 5,000 bosses, actually. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. No, it's, um, it's unique. You know, and I, I had, you know, I'd worked with a founder. I'd worked with Dave Thomas when I was at Wendy's. Uh, so oh, I had right, a chance right. to understand founders. And, uh, and then at Donato's, originally I was not in the family. I was, I was a employee. And uh, I think for me, the success of being in a family business is trying to capture the – magic that the the founder brings yeah and the and i'll call it the, the founding family brings there's yeah. there and there is visionary magic jim set out to do something that was absolutely different back in you know 57 years ago on the south end of columbus ohio right. yeah and you know very philosophical person and talking about unconditional love and bringing love in to a business model, you know, there's all these South End guys chomping on cigars, telling them, you know, no, you got to get the other guy before he gets you. That's what you got to do. And he's like, no, 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 we're going to do, you know, so that, and not only that, but his, his inventive mind. And, and so there's, there's magic that he brings, but my job was always to try to understand because, because we have to institutionalize a company. Because Jim yeah. won't be here forever, and right. you know, individuals won't be there forever. So how do you how do you take that and turn it into uh, you know a, a professional organization that's rooted in some per- process, perpetual, perpetual, right? yeah. yeah. And you know, my, the the best version of it I, I have for you is when you know Jim would come into my office and say, you know, he had a great uh, ability to kind of see trends and always has been. Still does, and he'll see something. You know, this is something that's coming. Here's what we need to do exactly. Here's how we need to do it, and here's when we need to do it, and how soon can you get it done? Because he's <laughs> the founder, and that's how he was successful. And sounds he had, familiar. Sounds. <laughs> and he had uh, a lot of great people who would help him paint that picture. But you get to a certain point, and and he always said he liked the fact that I would say to him, "Wait, wait, wait. What I think I hear you say is not not the end of that sentence, but." The beginning of that sentence, mm-hmm. which is, we need to be thinking about nutrition in a bigger way, and we need. To, so let me go back and let us figure out what are the different ways that we can do that and bring that back to him. And that that's that's how a family business with you know people that aren't family that bring in you know management processes and things like that. That's how the two things kind of fit together real well. Still, sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, my my favorite uh, Jim Grody story, and at full disclosure, I'm a big fan of his. I've known known him for a while. I mean, geez, like 20 years ago, something like that. We we did a prototype, and we went out and tested it with consumers. Uh-huh. So we came back, we, we tested three different types, and we're sitting in a conference room. And we said, "This is the one that of the three, Jim that tested the best." And Jim looked at him and he goes, okay, okay, this and this. And we talked about him. He goes, so this is the one that tested the best. And, and we all went, yeah. And he goes, that's great, but we're doing this one, <laughs> <laughs> which was a totally different one. And I'm like, okay. I mean, it's an admirable moment. I'm like, I'm with you. You're the boss, you know? I, I had a funny story with Dave Thomas when I was my first week on the job. I was the junior assistant new product marketing manager or something like that. Yeah. And they put me on the private plane with Dave Thomas and Emil Brolick, who was, uh, yeah. was my boss at the time, yeah, yeah. and some other people to, to fly to talk to a franchise partner. And I'm sitting on the airplane, you know, doing some work. And, uh, or pretending I, to. Pretending okay. to do work, exactly. <laughs> writing furiously and getting a you know, calculator out. Anyway, I feel these <laughs> eyes on me. I look over and he's staring at me. He says, so what do you do? I said, well, I'm the junior assistant new product marketing manager. He goes, so, so, so what do you do? <laughs> I said, <laughs> so I thought, I'll, I'll, question, right? I'll tell him a, a project I'm working on. I explained in detail how we were testing, taking this cheeseburger and testing in four stores to put two slices of cheese instead of one. And we're going to measure these five stores pre to post and we'll analyze the da, 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 da. Makes sense. He goes, so you're going to go through all that trouble to find out if people want more cheese on their cheeseburger. <laughs> I said, uh, okay. 
You're actually trying to find out if you can get away with less. <laughs> True. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the bottom line of it. Okay, so a little more specifically, everybody, uh, I went to a restaurant conference recently and we had a breakout session and it was, there was five breakout sessions at the same time, but everybody came to this one. It was about delivery. Yeah. And uh, you know, nobody could figure it out. They're, they're giving all their money to a third party. They're taking away the kind of the last part of the brand touch part of it. And they're paying too much money. They're losing profits and all that. But you would think you guys pretty much have had that figured out for a long time. Well, you know, they're still trying to figure out the business model that works. They are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, and we have had a system that we are continuing to try to perfect that, you know, we control. Uh, we uh, have systems in place so that we're ensuring that the product is hot, you know, and we get it there when we say we're going to get it there. So it's interesting because we actually signed up with Uber Eats when they first came into this market. And no, no other delivery companies would were doing that because, like, why would you do that? And we just wanted to really kind of understand it more than anything else. Good idea. And, yeah. uh, and as it turns out, by focusing on some basic kind of operations principles on our delivery, we improved our delivery service over that time period, and we actually have built our delivery business. It's probably 20% growth over the last four years. Um, so it's happening to you too. Yeah. <laughs> now, I won't say that – you know, I, I still, it, it's a big chunk of business. You know, right now, I think $50 million or a billion dollars of food is being delivered today and expect that to double in five years. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got to, you know, we've got to use technology to help us get better. I blame it on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole home entertainment thing, you don't go out anymore, you go to movies. You, why? I mean, it's almost, it's better to right. stay at home and binge watch, whatever. Hopefully the value equation ends up being, when the economic models settle out, hopefully the valuation, value equation settles out that, you know, we're going to be able to provide a better uh, price value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah and, and um, <laughs> when I thought about it, I thought, you guys have been doing this forever. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So in, in retail, the, the big thing is Amazon. Amazon's the 900-pound gorilla. Mm -hmm. And they're eating eating everybody's lunch. <clears throat> is there anything like that in your business? Is there any like great evil like that? Like before it was Walmart, you know, Walmart's taking anybody's business or everybody's business. Is is there anything like that in restaurants? I don't, I don't think there's anything like that. I think um I do think the third party delivery piece is a huge you know, that's a you know, what I just explained about doubling the business to a hundred billion dollars in five years. That's a big, that's a huge trend that we have to be aware of. Now, at the same time, you know, you have this labor issue and you've got shortage of delivery insurance, drivers, right. insurance. All, all, so I think the economic forces are going to be the thing that, you know, we've mm -hmm. got to plan for, I guess, better than anything else. You know, another thing is, um, and I don't know if this is a, a huge threat for you guys. It's not like Amazon is for retail. But one of the things that's happening, Columbus, Ohio is kind of on fire, which is a good thing for everybody's business in this town, local companies and, and otherwise. But um, there's also this rise of kind of uh, what we're calling like third wave restaurants. So the, the guys that have North Star, you know, Fusion Sushi, a Fox in the Snow. And these are all kind of share of stomach issues, right? You know, you're going to go to these places and they're trendier, they're more expensive, they, they put a zillion bucks into design. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like not so much labor, you know, but um, still, do you see, is it, what do you admire and then do you see any of those guys as a threat? I, I, I mean, you know, not specifically. Yeah, I both admire uh, a number of them and I also don't see a threat. I, I almost see it as as an advantage. And, and, and what I'm saying is I think the things that these uh, entrepreneurs are bringing are, you know, a level of quality and a level of food integrity and a level of uh, design. 
in, in some cases, a, a, a much more human touch yeah. than you're getting from big yeah. corporate chains. Yeah. So, and, and and that's, you know, for us, that's that's important. I think that's that's an important positioning for us. We 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 want to be defined as the place that brings a higher level of quality with food integrity in a company that cares, but we also have scale and we have convenience yeah, and delivery and online ordering and all these things that, that give us a great position between, you know, chains that may not, you know, have that kind of touch. Right. Uh, in fact, we did uh, a whole bunch of research with you all uh, years back and, and the consumer kind of put these two piles. One pile was they called default pizza, right? Which is the the bigger chains starts with it, yeah. Another D, maybe, yeah. maybe, <laughs> yeah. You know, and this is their these are their words that they don't care. But you know, it's you know at least I can get it quick, and I you know. And then there's this the local foodies is what they call the other side. You mm. know, a harvest pizza or a yep. you know, and and the quality is great, but the convenience wasn't there, and yeah, and that's where. Our, our position in the middle is is great. So when I see people define themselves more strongly on one side or the other, I think it's just better for our positioning. I, I, I love some of the – I think what uh, North Star does, yeah. uh, Brassica, I think is a, yeah, just amazing. a super cool uh, brand. And and the, the care that people are putting into the food preparation, I, I think it's great. I think it's – so a big buzz term in in retail and just in general is experience, like mm-hmm. uh, the experience economy and all this other thing. I mean, what does that mean to you, experience? Well, you know, at the same time, there's all this delivered food because I'm either too busy or I'm watching Netflix or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still, in fact, I think people yearn more and more to have a human connection. So I think the idea that dining, dining, dining businesses, because it has been trending down, but the fact, the idea that that's going away, I just don't think that, I think humans need to come together and they Mm -hmm. come together with a few things. They come together with music, they come together to eat together, you know, they come together at church, you know, there's things that bring people together that I, you know, I think, uh, I think is important. I had an experience once at a coffee shop, and this is a long time ago now because we really have a lot of coffee shops here for a long time. And I walked in, and the guy had coffee ready for me. He goes, there you go, Lee. And I didn't even know that he knew my name. Really? And I was like, I'm here forever. And yeah. th- and it, you're right. I sure. mean, that's that human touch. He remembered my name. He mm-hmm. knew what I wanted. I'm done. You know, I think our brand in Columbus, Ohio, benefits because there's, quote, a face to the brand. And it might even be literally, you know, Jim's face or Jane's face or, yeah. or, or the people, you know, in our stores that interact with people. But I think that it really does. It, it, that brings loyalty more than just the product. So I think you're, you're right, too, in the sense that uh, all those guys, all the aforementioned, really add a lot to the kind of genestica of Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. You know, uh, articles in the Wall Street Journal recently in New York Times and everything like this is the place to go and look out Columbus. I just read it in the hustle the other day where they were saying tech jobs are making or breaking cities. And oh, by the way, Columbus, Ohio is one of the fastest growing tech areas, you know, in the in the world. Right. I mean, so to be a part of that, you know, is, is essential. I think you want to grab onto that comet's tail. For sure. Um, I know it's a broad topic, and but it's still a big, big topic kind of across the board. And it's another one of those things like experience that I'm, I'm personally not really sure what it means. But artificial intelligence, mm-hmm. you guys, are you guys talking about that? Is that one of your leadership topics? It is actually. We are, you know, if you start on a spectrum of you know machine learning, which is just a you know a super computer way to solve problems quickly yeah. to artificial intelligence. We started with uh, a couple of projects last year that uh, we built with some folks in town to uh, help our managers manage their business better. Uh, one of the things is, uh, well, it's it's theft in, in, mm. in 
stores. You know, it's just a it's an issue that a lot of retailers have to deal with, right. especially restaurants and bars, things like that. So uh, we created something. It was a an AI machine called a, a no, anomaly detector. And the anomaly detector is just it's a it's an algorithm that basically just pops alerts when something is out of order. Now it could be, you know, it could be delivery times or it could be customer experience. In this case, you know, we had a significant big number of uh, shrink, as we call it, and it allowed you to say, "Oh, this is you want to look over here, you want to look on this day," and so our our managers were able to, you know. Pay closer attention to it, but kind of like yeah. de- detectives, yeah, the a robot, little bit robot detectives. Robot detectives. <laughs> that's that's one example. That's not that's not, not that all that exciting of an example. But the other that we're working on right now is uh, is AI for uh, voice recognition and ordering. So yeah, we're, yeah, that, that's we're testing. Natural, right? Yeah, we're testing a uh, you know with uh, a number of stores to have voice recognition system. So it'll be a computer that will be taking the order and it, it will sound just like a person. And and the AI uh, begins to learn the words that you use. Like, you know, maybe I say pep and cheese. That really means pepperoni. Right. The, the, the computer's learning that as we go along so that eventually you're just having a conversation with a I just talked about a human connection, didn't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're having a conversation with someone that you think is a human. So. <laughs> uh, ex machina. Right? On a lighter note, yes. you have a band. Is I do? that correct? Yes, I do. Grassanine. Grassanine. Very good. Yeah. Which is the unique combination of the word bluegrass and asinine, if that gives you any indication of the kind of band that we have. <laughs> So, so you have fun, really. Yes, right? we do have fun. Yeah. So you, do you play in places live? Is there any? Yeah, yeah. We play. We play around town. We've we've been doing it for about fifteen years. Um, it's a group of folks, some friends, and other people that you know. We've all gotten together. Uh, it's not necessarily our primary job, so we end up uh, giving the money that we make back to charity. We've given probably close to $100,000 back into different charities awesome. over time. So it, it really is kind of, it's fun. It's a give back kind of thing. We, and uh, we take uh, songs that you would not think were bluegrass songs, and we kind of make them bluegrass songs. Like Whole lot of Love or something? Uh, we do. Uh, we do Led Zeppelin. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. We, do, uh, <laughs> we have a Beyonce. Do we, we do all the single ladies in a bluegrass form. So, yeah. It's, huh? J-Lo. Prince, we do Prince. Ah, oh, yes, it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, anything else you'd, you'd like to have? Or, or You know what? Let, let me ask you this. How about a bold prediction? Bold prediction? Bold prediction for 2020. Aside than the Buckeyes winning the national championship. Oh, that's in, in 2020, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. in 2020. That's a cop out. Oh, that's not it? so bold. They're number that's two. That's a cop out. <laughs> uh, I predict that Donatos will go to a significantly higher level in terms of revenue next year. All right. And we'll fill you in on that later. Sometime. Okay. That's the bold one. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to add before we go to our, our somewhat infamous lightning round? You know, the one thing, uh, you were talking about Columbus and uh, about Columbus becoming a more and more attractive place for people to, to come and, and, you know, a talent attractor is uh, there's a... a a group called the Columbus Music Commission that I've uh, been a part of helping get going with a, a number of other really great, talented people, but have, uh, is designed to help musicians kind of elevate their craft. We have a, a bunch of talented people in Columbus, uh, creating an infrastructure of education, uh, bringing uh, people from out of town to come in to get exposure to the music scene, working with developers to uh, continue to create more and more places to enjoy music, but it's a real uh, kind of comprehensive way to look at mu- you know bringing music as as a real asset. So you talk about food, yeah, yeah, but you know music is another oh yeah one that I I think you know we do a great job and we can do so much better as making that a part of the fiber of Columbus. I remember looking at Austin one time and I thought mm-hmm. Austin, Texas was exactly the same as That's this right. city, yeah, except for. 
they have the Sixth Street music scene, and, it, and yep. it's, it's famous for music. And mm-hmm. we've got a little bit of that, but yep. to promote it, I think is I think you're right. I think it's sort of a missing slice of our pizza. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So lightning round. You ready? Lightning round. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say something, and then I want to hear what you have to say about it. OK Boomer. What's the first thing that comes to your mind about OK Boomer? Get a job. <laughs> OK. Do I have this right? That, I just that, learned OK that ranks. Boomer. I just learned OK Boomer. Did I do that right? We had uh, uh, Daphne Holland say, Prince. Prince? Yeah, and I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, why are boomers like so obsessed with the Beatles? <laughs> Prince was way better than the Beatles. That's great. <laughs> uh, favorite city? Aside other than, from other, Columbus. Aside from Columbus. Um, I would say Chicago. Uh, in, uh, in Europe, I, I think Venice, Italy is one of my favorite Going cities. Going underwater. I know. Wow. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pepperoni? Mana from heaven. <laughs> Uh, okay, the Super Bowl, which if anybody out there knows, this is a, an interesting stat. It is the number one pizza day in, in the world. That's when everybody, that's when the most pizza is sold, Super Bowl Sunday. Not for us, actually. Ours is in March, most of March, March Madness. Oh. Fridays in March are our highest. I shouldn't be telling no, no competitors can be listening to this, right? I, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh, Super Bowl, uh, way overpriced commercials, maybe. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit uh, oh my bit of hype. The, the college championship game is, is a better game, mm. I nice think. Um, favorite food other than pizza? Other than pizza? Yeah. Be lasagna. Uh, uh, that's not a good answer. I don't, that's good. Vodka, does that count? Is that a food? <laughs> yes. Nope. Okay. Vodka is a food right. type. Vodka. It's, it's, there's a potato involved there, I know. Somewhere. <laughs> All right, Tom. Uh, thank you very much. You've been super gracious and uh, much appreciated. Thanks, Lee. That was fun. Okay, people, be sure and listen anytime for for some more human interaction on Hot Topics, which, by the way, you're welcome to suggest. We're open to suggestions, uh, as as Tom did today. Also, uh, be sure and subscribe to this podcast. WDCast is at WDPartners.com. Go to the menu hamburger and hit what we think, and then go to the very bottom of the page. And on the bottom of the page towards the center is one of the icons, like an iPod icon, and just hit that. And uh, we've got a bunch of them in there now, 20 some or something like that, with Lionesque and uh, EY, Ernst & Young, Retail Dive, Fitch, and of course, Donato's Pizza. All right. All right, thank you. We'll stay frosty out there and we'll talk to you soon. 